Hey, there's some food. Finally. What do you have? Flaming fire flakes. Best in town. I'll take them. Mm -hmm. ah! oh, hot, hot! <laughs> Flaming fire flakes. Hot. What do you know? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the fire flakes from Avatar The Last Airbender. Here before me are some real life fire flakes, flaming Hot Cheetos. This of course is a very, very funny joke. But as funny as this joke indisputably is, if flaming Hot Cheetos is still your spicy, crunchy snack of choice, uh, you're welcome. Anyway, this is not a show about comparing different types of spicy snacks, this is about making our own. And my first attempt, mixing cornflakes with cayenne pepper, yielded mixed results. <laughs> and flying in the face of all conventional wisdom, milk offered no improvement. So it looks like we're gonna have to start from scratch. And for our Fire Flakes Foundation, there's a really cool recipe on chef steps for a sort of fried puffed rice cracker thing, which I think is gonna do the job nicely with some added spices, because flaming Fire Flakes, hot. So in a medium saucepan, we are combining 100 grams of long grain white rice and 400 grams of water. While that cooks, we're gonna make a spice blend reminiscent of Chinese five spice. Into the mortar of a mortar and pestle goes half a small cinnamon stick, half a small star anise pod, about a teaspoon of fennel seed, and a generous shake, oh, not that kind of shake, a generous shake of spicy, tingly, oddly numbing Szechuan peppercorns. I want this to be both the predominant flavor and sensation, so I'm gonna add about two tablespoons. Then, by virtue of my pestle, I'm going to mortar and pestle these spices together by hand into a finely ground powder, which as you can see is pretty tiring. You can do this, Andy, you got this. You might not have made it on the football team, but you cannot, screw it, I'm gonna get the blender. So instead, by virtue of a high-powered blender, we're gonna grind our spices into a fine powder. Powder. Then we're going to pass it through a fine mesh sieve to capture any big old honk and pieces. And then the resultant powder is going to be a kind of bitter, acrid, strange, spicy stuff. But do not worry, once it gets a little bit of heat treatment, it's going to taste a lot better. But then to complement its color and spiciness, we're going to also add some cayenne pepper and sweet paprika, about a teaspoon each, tiny whisked until homogenous. Meanwhile, over on the stovetop, our rice has cooked for about 15 minutes and is total mush. So now, using that self-same high-powered blender, we are going to liquefied into a paste with a couple teaspoons of our seasoning mix. Give it a little taste to make sure that it is spicy enough. Don't worry if it tastes a little off, it's going to taste a lot better once we cook it. But before we can cook it, first we must dehydrate it. So using an offset spatula, we're going to smooth it out to a one millimeter thick sheet on a silpat. You obviously don't have to measure it or anything, just make sure that it's really thin. The thinner your sheet, the rewards will be sweet. And now bust out the biggest dehydrator you got in the house, pop in your spiced puree of rice spread. That sure sounds appetizing, right? Close your frankly charming French doors if you got them. Crank this fellow up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit and let it dehydrate for two hours, during which time your sheets should mostly dehydrate more towards the edges than the center. So when we remove them, we're gonna do two things. First, we're gonna peel them off the sill pat. They're probably still gonna be gooey on the bottom, don't worry about that. And then we're gonna flip those sheets gooey side up on top of our dehydrator racks and break off the parts that are fully dehydrated. They should be ever so slightly bendy, but snap when stressed. Everything else that's not yet dried out is getting another 30 minutes in the dehydrator, after which time you should have two sheets of very unsettling looking skin-like rice cracker uh, things, which we are now going to break down into flakes, because, you know, fire flakes. You want to break them down to about half the size that you would eventually want them to be because they're going to expand by about 50% when we deep fry them. Into some 350 degree Fahrenheit oil they go for like five seconds. That's all the time it should take for them to puff up and float to the top. Drain them on some paper towels, rinse and repeat. And then it's time to discover just how surprisingly good they are. Let's listen to my unfiltered reaction. Mm. Oh my god. Huh. Oh my god, that's actually good. It's actually good. Holy shit. I'm not always surprised when the food that I'm making comes out right, but my pre-fried taste tests had not given me high hopes. But here we are with some spicy, tingly, flavorful, crunchy, oily, delightful little snacks, which I think could use a little bit more kick and of course, a generous pinch of kosher salt applied and tossed together while warm. I don't know why I'm using so many bowls here. At least I can't use any more in making this recipe. Ah, damn it. So there you have it. Fire flakes as I always kind of imagine them. They are spicy and tingly and the flake itself
itself has this light, ethereal, bubbly, disappear-in-your-mouth muncho-like crunch. And they are spicy from the cayenne pepper and the Sichuan peppercorn, but they're not scratch-off-your-tongue hot. If you want to make it Avatar The Last Airbender accurate, just up the spice content. Because, you know, flaming fire flakes. Hot. 